So my desire was to learn the bifunctional enzyme PFK2, P, uh, FBP, ACE2. And we're going to think about this bifunctional enzyme as a switch. So let's say the switch can be in one of two positions. One position is the OH position. But obviously then we have a different position, and let's call that other position the PO4 position. So instead of thinking of on and off, let's think of an OH position and a PO4 position. Now let's describe our enzyme according to this switch. If we think of just the OH orientation or the OH position, that is the orientation of the enzyme where the PFK2 function is active and the FBPase2 function is inactive. Now very easily then we can understand the different orientation, the PO4 orientation, in which case PFK2 is inactive and FBPase2 is active. Now let's say we wanted to move from one orientation, the OH, to the PO4 orientation or flip the switch. How do we do that chemically? Well we would need a cofactor, an enzyme or something that could add a PO4 group to the OH group. Do we have such a thing? Well yeah, and we've used it before. It's cyclical AMP dependent PKA. That will effectively change the orientation of this bifunctional enzyme so that we're in the PO4 orientation, the FBPase2 is active. Now let's say we wanted to switch it back to the other orientation or flip the switch the other way. We have another enzyme we've looked at, phosphoprotein phosphatase or PP1 and that essentially removes the PO4 group and will put it back in the OH orientation or replace the PO4 with an OH. Now let's say we're in that OH conformation. The switch is thrown that way. PFK2 is active. What does that mean? Well basically that means that we will have an increased production of fructose 2,6-biphosphate that will enhance or encourage the activity of PFK1, which means we'll see an increase in glycolysis. So if you see this bifunctional enzyme in the OH position, you know you're going to be increasing glycolysis because of those reasons. What about the other flip side? If you're in the PO4 conformational state, you know that the FBPase2 is active. PFK2 has to be inactive. What does that mean for the, the cell, or in this case probably the liver? Well, you're going to find that FBPase2, that's the fructose to 6-biphosphatase, is going to convert F26BP to fructose 6P. Now that's a movement up the gluconeogenesis pathway which means we're going to be creating glucose eventually, the opposite of glycolysis, so glycolysis is going to be suppressed or perhaps off. Now, let's say we wanted to drive the reaction toward the PO4 state. We wanted to flip the switch that way. We know we need CAMP-dependent PKA to be active. What drives that? What hormone should we be thinking of? Well, it's glucagon. And in what state would the body increase the levels of glucagon to do all of this? Well, it would be a fasted state where we have low blood glucose. So let's go left to right. We're in a fasted state. We don't have a lot of glucose in our blood. The liver wants to put glucose back into the blood. We know we need to increase gluconeogenesis. How do we do that? Well, alpha cells from the pancreas release glucagon. That travels to the liver. The liver is going to use that through a cascading signaling mechanism to cause an increased level of cyclical AMP. That's going to cause cyclical AMP dependent PKA to be activated. That is going to add the PO4 to the bifunctional enzyme. It's going to form, not form, but it's going to be in the FBPase2 active state and you're going to have conversion of fructose 2,6-biphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. You're going to have an increase in gluconeogenesis. Eventually that fructose 6 phosphate is going to become glucose 6 phosphate, which is going to become glucose, and through the GLUT2 channel of the liver, that's going to be released into the bloodstream and kabam. In a fasted state, we've increased our blood glucose. Now, what if we want to drive it the other way? We want to increase PP1. Do we have an enzyme that is going to help us do that? 
and flip the switch to the OH position, yeah, it's the insulin, it's the uh, hormone insulin. When do we do that? Well, when the fed state, when there's a high blood glucose level. And let's think if this makes sense. We've just eaten a meal, we have a lot of glucose in our blood. What do we do when there's a lot of glu glucose in our blood that's potentially dangerous? Well, pancreatic beta cells are going to secrete insulin. Insulin always drives glucose into the cell. That insulin is going to signal the cell to basically turn on phosphoprotein phosphatase, PP1. PP1 is going to remove the phosphate group from our bifunctional enzyme. It's going to be replaced with an OH. That conformational state means that PFK2 is active. When the PFK2 part of our bifunctional enzyme is active, then we have an increase in fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. You have an increase in PFK1 activity, and that is a movement down our glycolytic process, and we're going to have more glycolysis happening because we had a lot of glucose, so we might as well take advantage of that in the liver and create energy through the glycolytic cycle and eventually the TCA and store some of it as fatty acid. Just going to throw on a couple of the forms in case you want to look at this or study it. In our fed state, remember our I to G ratio, the insulin to glucagon ratio is high. And in our fasted state, the insulin to glucagon ratio is low.